Is a fiberglass boat more like your car or a bathtub? Grab your rubber ducky and we'll tell you all about how a fiberglass boat is made. Hi, I'm Sean from Lensco Lessons in Boating. We talk to customers all the time about how a fiberglass boat is made. It's one of our most common questions. Having been in the industry as long as we have and toured many, many factories over the year, we really would like to show you how the process is so different from many other recreational vehicles out there. Remember, if you like this video, please throttle that like button and get on board by subscribing and getting the notifications for more to come. So in today's video, we're gonna cover why a boat is built differently than a car, how your boat gets waxed and painted first before it even has a structure, what is next in the build process after that, when they add stringers and structures, and how many molds there are, what happens when you take it out of the mold, and how is everything put together in the final process and wrapped up for you to go home. We see all the time on TV and in movies a car assembly line and it usually starts with a frame and then the engine is added and the rest of the drivetrain and then they build up the rest of the components and the body and finally at the very end they paint the car and they roll it down the, the rest of the assembly line. A boat is completely opposite. In fact, it's built from the outside in. So a boat is actually built very much like a bathtub. It's built out of a mold. So after they make the initial mold and they clean it, the very, very first thing your boat gets is a coat of wax. So they wax the mold and then they spray in the gel coat, which is what you would think of as paint as it is on a car. They spray that gel coat in nice and thick. And then after that is cured, they might put in another layer, an epoxy layer. And after that, we start building out the structure. After the gel coat gets sprayed in, we start with fiberglass. Fiberglass is little glass shards that are actually ironically stronger than steel. When we put the fiberglass in a boat, we're spraying it in and then we put in a resin that bonds and solidifies the whole fiberglass into a mat. After the fiberglass chop goes in, they put in a fiberglass woven roving, which is essentially a blanket of fiberglass, and then they add more rosin. They do that over and over and over again until they build up enough thickness that there's a strength there for the hull of the boat. At the same time, they're putting in other structural components. They're putting in the stringers, which are essentially the foundation of the boat. They put in the transom, which is what takes the thrust of the engine and transmits it to the rest of the boat. All the deck fittings that need backing plates may be put into the mold at this time. They continue to add these components and build the fiberglass up until it's strong enough to pop out of the mold, which usually takes about 12 hours to cure after they're all said and done. So a fiberglass boat is made up of at least two, if not three molds. Just like the hull was done, there's also a deck mold. And sometimes there's a stringer mold that is bonded into the bottom hull of the boat. What happens next after they've cured is that they physically force that boat, hull, or deck out of the mold using large hoists or hydraulic presses. They move it and trim all the rough edges off and they take it to a station which has what are called jigs. And jigs are designed to drill all the holes or cut any holes where mechanical fixtures are going to be put on the boat. So they'll drill holes for things like your windshield for the engine mounts, for lifting eyes, drain plugs, bilge pumps, anywhere where there's going to be a component mounted to the hull or deck, it's now drilled at that time. So there are two main molds, the hull mold and the deck mold are actually joined after a lot of the componentry is put in the boat. They'll put the engine in the hull and they'll put a lot of the lining, carpeting, anything that's going in. And in the deck mold, they'll put a lot of the gauge components, the steering and the wiring harness, and the fuel tank or any other componentry will be put in the hull. Once those are all installed, they'll actually take the deck mold and put it over top of the hull mold. And it's what's called a shoe box fit. Just like when you buy a pair of shoes, the top lid is slightly larger than the bottom box. 
Well, the same is true of the deck. It's slightly larger than the hull mold. So once it goes over top and they make sure it fits snugly over top of the hull, they'll actually mechanically fasten it by usually putting a very strong adhesive around the joint and screws through the top deck mold through into the hull mold to make it a permanent bond. So after the decks and hull are put together, now it's the final steps. They would put in any last minute componentries, maybe some gauges, maybe some switches, other little things that need to be installed, the upholstery, the canvas, anything that is done after the boat is put together physically, then it would go through an inspection process. They would test all of those components. They would run water over the hull to make sure there was no uh, leaks. And then they're gonna clean it, they're gonna polish it, and they're gonna wrap it up so that it can come home to a marine dealer and eventually into your hands. Hopefully after today's video, you kind of understand the basics of how a fiberglass boat is built. Unlike a car, which is high volume and often robotic, a boat manufacturing facility, although they use good equipment, and they have some very tight processes, are really built by human hands. They're lower volume, and they're a lot more art than science when it comes down to it. There's soul that's put into every boat. Remember, in our description below, there'll be lots of resources that'll help you out with your boat buying decision. If you wanna know more about fiberglass versus aluminum boats, check out this link here for a video that compares the two. Thanks for joining us on today's Lens Cove Lessons in Boating. Make sure you like this video and hit that subscribe button for more content just like this. Stay safe, have fun, and we'll see you out on the water.